Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Let's start right away. Let's get this going with the hadith. Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu reported, the Messenger of Allah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa alihi wa sallam alayhi salatu wa salam said, the most beloved of places to Allah are the mosques and the most hated of places to Allah are the markets. This is from Sahih Muslim 671. An Abi Huraira, anna Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa alihi wa sallam qala, ahabbu al-binadi ila Allahi masajiduha wa abghadu al-binadi ila Allahi aswaqaha. So this is from Sahih Muslim. So when you go to the mall, Try to remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in a place where people forget Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because they're preoccupied by countless distractions and heedlessness. This is for this is for shopping malls, souks, bazaars, fish markets, uh, markets. When I was a student, I studied a little bit of the works of Emile Zola. And Zola wrote a book called Au Bonheur des Dames which is translated to the ladies' paradise. And Zola himself was exceptional in his understanding of the department store as an emblem of modernity and optimism. And in the year 1881, while he was researching this, this novel that he was writing, he spent five or six hours a day at the Paris stores in Bon Marché, at the Louvre and Place Clichy, and he felt that the new paradise of the world, of the modern world that he was living in, was the department store. It was the beacon of life. And, and from his book, it was, it was described as, and I quote, it was like a riot of color, a joy of the street bursting out here in this wide open, open shopping corner where everyone could go and feast their eyes. Okay. Now, at the same time, Zola sensed and celebrated the vitality of the modern marketing world and the shopping bazaar. He also feared of its power to tap and release the power of women. Sometimes he describes the store as a commercial cathedral, the site of a new feminine religion. So what he was saying is that, you see, on the edition of the book that I had purchased when I was a student doing my master's degree, the um, the book had a, a cover, if I remember properly, of women without heads, because he was saying that when women would go shopping, they would lose their minds and they would be completely distracted by all of this glitter that was going on in the marketplace. And actually, I disagree with Zola that he claims that it's, it has this negative effect on women. But the truth is, is that we as Muslims know that the marketplace or the souk or the shopping mall or the bazaar or the fish market, all of these types of places have a negative effect on both men and women. Men can lose their minds in the shopping, in, in, in the shopping uh, area and women can lose their minds in the shopping galaxy as well. So it, it's not confined to one gender actually. So here you see that people forget about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when they are engulfed with consumerism. So Zola said something really deep and I'm gonna quote, he wrote, while the churches were gradually emptied by the wavering of faith, they were replaced in souls that were now empty by his emporium. Women came to him, the shop or the souk or the shop owner to spend their hours of idleness, the uneasy trembling hours that they would once have spent in the chapel, meaning they could have, they used to use that time in the church, in the kanisa, but now all of a sudden they're giving their time in the shopping malls. And this is what's happening in the world today. And that's also another reason why the masjids are loved by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, because that's the location or the place or the makan where people are doing the adhkar of Allah. People are doing the remembrance of Allah and the angels are there. But on the other hand, on the opposite end of the spectrum, bil aqs, you will see that the shopping malls and the souks and the bazaars, these are places where people are not always keeping the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this was not, this is not only a problem happening in, in Christian Europe in the 1800s or the late 1800s. This started happening 
around the world, this whole consumerist phenomena. So the department store is a place where women can get distracted. And for us as Muslim, we say that it's a place where men and women can find sanctuary and distraction, where they can develop professionally and meet other people, where they can find freedom in the city and express their needs. And on the other hand, Zola himself says that it is a seductive machine that can exploit women. He claims in the book, woman was what the shops were fighting over when they competed. It was women whom they ensnared with the constant trap of their bargains after stunning her with their displays. They had aroused new desires in her flesh. They were a huge temptation to which she must fatally succumb. First of all, giving in to the purchases of a good housewife, then seduced by vanity and finally consumed. So now we understand that us as Muslims, we know that the superiority of the masjids is obvious and undeniable. People pray and worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They're doing ibadah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the masjids. They recite the Quran in the masjids and they encourage one another to obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to increase, to increase oneself in, in ibadah and ta'at. The masjid in the time of Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam alayhi salatu wa salam, was also the center of governance for the Muslim state. Foreign delegations were received there. The consultative assembly was held in Masjid al-Nabawi and all matters of the states were discussed therein. The Masjid was the center, the center of governance, the center of decision making. And all of a sudden, people are now shifting away from the Masjids and going into the shopping malls. And these are places where you will learn that Shaitan and the and the kuffar jinn are basically having a great time in there. So on the other hand, the malls and the bazaars where people are shopping, they forget Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When the adhan happens, and you know this if you live in Muslim countries, and you know this if you have actually gone shopping in Muslim countries, you will see it sometimes. When the adhan is happening and the time of prayer is called, it goes unnoticed by many people. There's, it's as if they're deaf to it. They hear it and others don't hear it and others don't pay heed to it anymore. They're just, they're just jumping in the, the sales, the tanzilat, and they're just busy shopping and they, they even forget about their salah. Shaitan makes us indulge in such forbidden acts as fraud in the market, lying, gossiping, checking other people out, and worst of all, wasting money. So moreover, I'm going to say souks, bazaars, malls, these are places that attract many people with various intentions. Some of these people are thieves. Others are there to look at women or men. Others are there to lie, cheat, deceive, or con artists are walking around. Others are there to make a halal livelihood. So it's basically a fish market or a melting pot of people with various intentions. So please think about it when you go into the marketplace. Do your adhkar. La ilaha illallah wahdahu la sharika lahu nahnu munku wa lahu alhamdu yuhyi wa yumitu wa huwa hayyu la yamutu bi yadi alkhair wa huwa ala kulli shay'in qadir do that adhkar when you enter into the marketplace and keep using astaghfar and keep using this specific adhkar in the marketplace keep doing adhkar and dhikr on your mouth while you're in the marketplace focus on where you have to do your shopping buy your stuff and get out of there stay in the remembrance of allah in the marketplace because when you're doing that and other people are in a state of ghafla it is very powerful it is a powerful sign of iman when you inshallah are doing dhikr in the marketplace while everybody else has forgotten allah subhanahu wa ta'ala i will leave it at that subhana rabbika rabbil izzati amma yasifun wa salamun ala al mursalin walhamdulillahi rabbil alamin subhanaka lahumma wa bihamdika ashhadu an la ilaha illa anta astaghfiruka wa atubu ilaik